Uh, hello, my name is Jeff. I am the tech, a tech lead for real-time infrastructure team at Facebook. One of the things I like using Facebook for is sharing pictures of my kids with friends and family abroad. Here's one of my kids. Isn't he adorable? Now, when I post this, I like to get the likes and I get, like to get feedback on it. And one thing you may not notice sometimes, and sometimes you do notice, is that like, the, life, the like sentence is real time. When someone likes this and I'm watching this, I'll get that in real time. If someone is typing, I will see that someone is typing in real time. And when they commit that comment, I will then see that comment appear in real time via our team. This is powered by an ephemeral pub sub store. So this is what I'm going to be talking today about today. I'm going to be talking about some of the motivations, conclusions about a re-architecture for our, pubs, our ephemeral pub sub system that the real-time infrastructure team owns. Our system powers millions of publishers per minute, over billions of subscriptions. And so to set, set, to set the stage, when I talk about ephemeral pub sub, I'm talking about these three core contracts. A device like your phone will subscribe to an arbitrary string topic. It'll provide a handler. Hello. The expectation is that when a publish happens, that handler is going to get fired for that topic with the payload the publisher sent. At any time, your device may say, I'm no, I'm no longer interested in getting live likes for this goat pick because you looked away. I don't know why you looked away. It's your problem. Um, so you unsubscribe. Now also, if your device goes away, you unsubscribe to all topics. Now this is what we mean by ephemeral. The subscriptions are tied to the life cycle of the connection. And our system is designed to scale such that we can have a lot of these subscriptions. They can live for a second to however long your device lives. And so what I want to do today is also talk about the story of 2016. We had a system, it worked well enough. But, so we wanted to quantify what well enough meant. We didn't really have a great dashboard that says, hey, you're a 5.9 service, or a 3.9 service, or a 1.9 and we all cry. So we really wanted to be able to say, this is our reliability, and we commit to it. Additionally, we wanted to be able to say, we should be able to subscribe, have a billion subscribers to the same topic. Everyone on Facebook should be able to look at a post due to some worldwide event, and our system should work, and we should be able to sleep through that. And this kind of feeds into our mission as a social utility. So. Taking a step back at the entire architecture, this is the 50,000 foot view. And we're, and we're going to walk through the flow of this and then do some analysis at the end. So if you're my friend, you come look at my GOAT post, your device is going to subscribe to the GOAT's topic. My GOATs have lots of topics. Your device will subscribe, that the subscribe goes to the gateway. That subscribe request will be taken by the gateway. It'll be wrapped up inside a burrito. The burrito is going to be labeled with the gateway's IP and port. And then that burrito is going to be shoved over to the subscription store. At this point, you're fully subscribed. Now, you're looking at my goat pick. One of my other friends is looking, and they like it. So this like is going to trigger a publish in the routing tier. The routing tier will then download every single subscription for the said topic do some product logic, and then forward the request over to the gateway. Now, it's doing a lot of logic here. And all it's sending to the gateway is, hey, send us for delivery. The, blah. the gateway will oblige and say, take that payload, send it on the wire. And there's, the gateway doesn't really do much beyond protocol uh, uh, semantics. So the system should be under, easy to understand in terms of reliability. It's a database. You put data in, you get data out. It's not so under, it wasn't so easy, and I made a lot of mistakes. So I want to talk about those mistakes. The biggest mistake I made was thinking that the network, the, the arrows between all these diagrams, was the only source of problems. 
I was thinking somehow the composition of all these metrics, so we have really well instrumented clients. Somehow the composition of all these uh, relationships would help me understand the entire reliability. And make a dashboard. And it's like, hey, we're a 4.9 service. That's pretty good. Why do we have issues that make us feel like a 2.9 service? Why is the math and reality not agreeing? And it turns out the math, math is hard. Um, so we, we realized that there was a problem, so we took a step back. It wasn't just network. Something else was going on. And so we took that step back and really decided to refocus our effort on saying, well, let's revisit it. What does reliability mean for us? And so the lesson is start from the top and say, what does it mean? And so here we have a very traditional definition of reliability. What we accomplish over what we should have accomplished. What our successes are over our, the total attempts. Now, this is very, I mean, this is an intuitive definition. But then the real problems start to occur when we actually start to compute it. And it just gets this mind blowing thing. It's like, okay, I can compute the number of deliveries by looking at the gateway. Cool. I can compute the number of publishers by looking at routing. Cool. But the thing connecting it, the subscription store, the number of subscribers, oh, that's so, oh, that's a hard problem. And so what I want to illustrate here is by starting with this definition, it triggered a whole cascade of new questions. And so thinking about this made us think, oh my goodness, a whole lot of other things matter. Durability, accuracy, throughput. We need to think about the subscription store. And it turns out that we had problems. So it was a single sharded service. Now we had an anti-entropy model, but what we didn't know about that model was what kind of holes would be introduced in the stream. And those holes are then a missed opportunity, possibly, for some subscription realizing its full potential. And so we realized that there was a problem, and we knew what the answer was. Replicate. Done. Wash our hands. Go home. But mean, blah. meanwhile, dot, 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 the other goal for 2016 was proving more difficult. A billion is a lot. A billion is a big number. Now, I look at this and I start to have a mental seg fault. Because you start, like the, the, the problem becomes clear when you think about if a subscription is about a kilobyte, then, oh my goodness, each publish is using a terabyte network. Oh my goodness. Now I grew, I'm a child of the 90s, and I still have this mental anchoring that a megabyte is, a big, is big. I remember installing games floppy after floppy. So I'm, I'm a little rooted in thinking a megabyte is big, and a terabyte is just so unfathomable to me. Um, so I realized that this mental seg fault of the terabyte published was no good. And so we stepped back in, we realized we had some intrinsic system limits that was actually affecting our reliability. Like if you require a terabyte per publish and you have thousands of publishes a second during some event, what happens if you only achieve 1%? Well, you're not even 1.9, and at that point, it just feels sad. So we realized we had to re-architecture. So we had. And by re-architecture, really about rethinking the roles. So there's really three roles here. The routing tier, subscription store, gateway. Those are, in some sense, core to the problem. And in some sense, all you have to do is move them around. And so that's exactly what we did. We took the routing tier, left it more or less as is. And then the big thing here is we took the subscription store, and we slammed it on the gateway. This creates a problem of how do I find out which gateways are interested in a topic? Well, we then stated up a new service called Endpoint Store. Now, the Endpoint Store basically maps which topic is, which gateways are interested in a topic. So if the subscription store is a map of topic to subscriptions, the Endpoint Store is a map of topic to a set of gateway hosts. And this has a lot different characteristics. Like, so much so I'm really, I'm just super excited about it. And it's so different that it's also cheaper to replicate, so we added replication by three. So let's trace out how it works. Again, you look at a goat pick. Sweet, sweet goat picks. Your device will subscribe to some live-like topic. The gateway will get it. Now when it gets it, it'll just slam it in memory, and it's done. 
it will then send a little tickle out saying, I'm interested in this topic. An endpoint store will go, cool, you're now mapped. At that point, you're subscribed. So now the routing tier gets to publish. Someone liked the, the goats, because who doesn't? Routing will now download from three replicas all the endpoints that are in there. So most of them are completely identical. When they are not identical, that's telling us the problems in the system, but it's also letting us, giving us an opportunity to do, do repair. Now, since we're streaming from three replicas, we now, as, as we learn of a new gateway host, we then forward it on. So here, the routing tier does, does nothing. All routing does is just get forward, get forward. So once the gateway gets it, it does all the work. It will do the fan out for every single person on the box. It will do any product logic. It will do any throttling. It provides us much more precise product uh, controls. And because it's all in the same box, it's a very agile solution. We can just go, oh, we need a new rate limiter thingy. We just go add it, deploy it, and we can do that in like two hours. Because we don't have to go add contracts throughout the entire system. And then once the gateway's done all of its logic, it then writes to the device in the same old way. So that's kind of the new architecture. So let's go back to it and revisit those goals. So what about delivery? What about reliability? Well, the nice thing is all of these are now computable on a single host. Now, assuming that the host is reliable, it's healthy, there's no bugs, that's a big one. That's our biggest source of issues is if there's no bugs, there's no reason this isn't one. Might be bugs, but it's so fast, because here we're utilizing the entire like Northbridge, all this the, the memory and bus, it's like we have these Haswells, like, crazy gigabytes per second of capacity. This for us is one. However, it doesn't answer the holistic question of what's the reliability of our service. Because now we introduce a new service. So now we think about, we have to rethink reliability. And now it turns out it's a lot easier. So the numerator here is what we actually achieve. This is purely, what did we do over the network? Now, the gateway subscribes is a little bit more holistic, but as long as we got some responses from some of the shards, and we trust that the endpoint store is working well enough, we know that the routing tier has an accurate view of the world. And we can even validate that with the anti-entropy model between the gateway and endpoint store that the system's working well. So we're pretty much sure that the routing tier has a complete view. So now we can basically rely on what we call path reliability, which is how well is routing talking to the gateways. And the gateways may have problems, and that's how we measure reliability. But it's a far simpler world, because now we're not thinking about how accurate is the view of routing after copying all the data from the devices to routing. Now it's simply how accurate is the endpoint store. What about a billion? Again, billion, super big number. So a billion people decide to look at some post. Hopefully it's my goat post. That would be fantastic. So a billion, you know, it's a big number, but for an uncharted fleet, not big at all. Simple load balancer will just nom 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 on all that traffic. So the gateways will just spin up a little bit of traffic. They'll take all that traffic, they'll stick it in their memory. And what they do is they peep out, hey, this one post, I'm interested in it. And so the now the endpoint store only needs to capture the, uh, the number of hosts. And this is far more reasonable load. Now this has two, um, maybe not two, but there's some interesting things that you can deduce from this. One, this is fully testable. We don't need to invent a topic that a billion people are going to go, hey, I'm subscribed. No, we can just say, can the endpoint store handle the number of hosts subscribing to it? Sure, test it. Go to every host, ping them, subscribe. Ooh, oh, good, it worked. Great, sleep well at night. Go to the gateway. Say, for everyone on the subscribe, create a topic, can you subscribe? Hey, we can store it in memory. Great, everything works. Great. These two properties allow us to say, hey, we can do a billion. Great. Now, the way that this manifests is that we sleep a lot easier now. We can absorb all this traffic. We don't even notice. Back in the early parts of 2006, hot, a hot video, hot topic would appear. We'd get woken up, usually before it's on like CNN or anything. It happens. So now we don't notice it, and that's a great place to be. 
So, so the lessons that uh, I learned personally was taking a step back is very important. It's, it's cathartic in a certain sense. It's easy to get blocked, so take a step back and really reevaluate from the top. Ask, what is the product experience? How are people experiencing this? The second one was knowing, in some sense, aim high, learn your limits. Those limits are a breathtaking view of reality. They, they let you know, oh, if, if said thing happens, then this falls over. OK. Then you start to assess, well, will that likely ha thing happen? For us, we knew that we had heat problems. And we knew that if we could go to a billion, all these heat problems go away. And they did. But it's also, for us, it was also a risk, risky bit. Like, if something big happened and a billion people actually subscribed to a single topic, which is fully expressible in our API, and if we can't support it, that's bad. Because for us, not being able to hit that traffic means our reliability crashes. I mean, if we were taking like a slaw saying, for a year we want to be six nines, that's a really hard one when you have a day where you just fall over for four hours. And that's it. Dot, dot, dot. Questions? Um, so the re-architecture you did to capture the number of gateways interested in, or the map of gateways interested in topics looks very, very similar to like the way IP multicast works. Like, this this looks very similar to the way that IP multicast works when you're doing like like well, financial pub sub or whatever. So like, are you guys doing this with any IP multicast, or is it all replicated it's, unicast? It's, What's it's, the? It's no, there's no multicast. This is, it actually mirrors more of an effort to go from a traditional database to MapReduce. Okay. And for us, it's actually the architecture isn't the big thing. It, the harder thing was moving all product logic that was using it. That was a. Uh, that was the bear of the task, because it's like the actual architecture takes like a couple weeks to just sit down and hammer out. It's moving all the customers. That was, that was the uh, fun part. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you.